Hello there, this is MTG Degree, my name is Luke, and today we're going to go over the top 10 most annoying decks of all time. Now, when we do this, we're just going to go over the core cards in each deck so you can get an idea of why they're so oppressive without going over every single card in each list. Now, without further ado, let's start. Coming in at 10th place is Burn. This multi-format all-star is a deck that annoys many people. With cards like Lava Spike, you can see where this deck is going, and probably more tables have been flipped over this deck than any other. So while not extremely oppressive, this one definitely deserves a spot on the list. Number 9 on our list is The Deck, and The Deck was a deck created in 1996, very early in Magic's history. Now, The Deck looks something like what you might see nowadays on any magic table. It's got counter spells, it's got swords to plowshares, mana drain, moat, quite the strong spell. Now, the deck was named as such because people would ask each other, have you played against the deck before? And this deck is the precursor to all control decks that exist now. So if you hate blue, you have the deck to thank for it. Coming in at number 8 is Fairies. This deck dominated Lorwyn's standard block in 2009, and is composed of cards such as Bitter Blossom, Mistbind Click, Scion of Una, and Spell Stutter Sprite. Now you can see why this deck is so annoying. It plays creatures, while at the same time countering your spells, tapping your lands, and it even has Cryptic Command, which many players have said, if you have Cryptic Command in your hand and you can cast it, you cannot lose the game on that turn. So this deck is extremely powerful and known as Aggro Control, where they're beating you to death while at the same time not allowing you to do anything. A very frustrating deck to play against. Our next deck coming in at number seven is Lantern Control. A current contender in the modern format, Lantern Control seeks to hide behind Ensnaring Bridge while playing Lantern of Insight, Codex Shredder, and Ghoul Caller's Bell. This stops your opponent from attacking, while at the same time giving you control over the top of their deck. When properly piloted, this deck does not allow your opponent to draw a single useful card once the combo comes online. Because of the frustration of never getting to draw any of the cards that you see on the top of your deck, Lantern Control easily makes it into this slot on the list. The only reason it's not higher is because it requires several pieces to work properly and can be hated out by a player that truly dislikes the deck. Coming in at number 6 is Cobblade the most dominant deck of Standard in 2011. It had Stoneforge Mystic, along with her friends Batterskull, Sword of Feast and Famine, and Sword of War and Peace. It also had Jace the Mind Sculptor, which, as pretty much every Magic player knows, is a completely busted card. Both of these cards have been banned in Modern, as well as Preordain, which was also in the deck, one of the best card filtering spells we've seen in a long time. This deck also included the powerhouse Celestial Colonnade as a four of, and even two Ink Moth Nexuses. The deck had an incredible amount of angles with which to win games. This deck was so powerful at the time that the main strategy in Cobblade was figuring out how to beat Cobblade, because there were so many copies. Our next deck coming in at number five is Miracles. This deck relies on the combo of Sensei's Divining Top with counterbalance. This allows the player to manipulate the top of their deck at all times to make sure that counterbalance freely counters as many spells as possible. While feeling fundamentally unfair, this deck also takes a long time to play against because it's constantly changing the top of its deck with Sensei's Divining Top. Additionally, the mechanic Miracle makes its way into this deck. The mechanic of Miracle is when you draw a card, if it's the first card that you draw that turn and it's a miracle, then you can play it for its miracle cost. However, by the ability of the deck to constantly choose what's on top, it can choose when to play its powerful miracles, 
allowing it to remove the luck involved in those cards and simply getting their immense power level for free. This deck is so oppressive that many people are wondering if Sensei's Divining Top should be banned in Legacy, a format known for allowing pretty much anything to fly. At number four, we have a deck which was never particularly dominant. However, its strongest card was banned simply because the deck was so annoying and the games took so long. The name of the deck is Eggs. So how does the deck work? When you look at a deck list for eggs, it's really quite confusing, but the strategy boils down to a simple end, which is that you play small artifacts, which draw you cards, and then you send them to the graveyard. Then you play Second Sunrise, and you get all of those cards back. And you keep on doing this until you rip through your deck and you keep on playing Second Sunrise. At some point, you'll be able to use Conjurer's Bobble to make Second Sunrise the top card of your deck. At this point, you can infinitely recur all of your artifacts, including one Pyrite Spell Bomb, which if you recur enough times, you can deal 20 damage to your opponent. While not exceedingly complex, when an Eggs player is going off, the combo can easily last 20 minutes where their opponent is just sitting there. So this deck easily deserves number four. Coming in at number three is a deck called Thopter Depths. Now, this deck was part of the extended format, which is sort of the precursor to modern. Now, this deck had two infinite combos. One of them was Dark Depths along with Vampire Hex Mage. So this allowed you to remove all of the counters on Dark Depths and hit them with a 2020 flyer. Obviously, that's pretty obnoxious, but the real obnoxious part is the second combo in the deck, which works so well with it. The second combo in the deck is Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek. So the way this works is that you continuously sacrifice Sword of the Meek. When you get your 1-1 Thopter, then you bring back Sword of the Meek, sacrifice it, so you can get infinite Thopters. The annoying thing about this deck is that it gave your opponent a very serious problem. They could die two ways. One of them is by infinite small creatures, and the other one is by one very large creature. So this doesn't really allow them to have a cohesive strategy against you. Single target removal is bad, and board sweepers are bad because they tend to be sorcery speed, and you can do this at instant speed on their end step to create all the thopters. As you can imagine, both of these combos are so obnoxious that they are now banned in modern. Coming in at number two is the most hellish prison control combo to date, and that is the Icy Manipulator Winter Orb combo. Now, when you look at these two cards together, you can already see why they're strong. So, if the board state is empty, then you can take your Icy Manipulator, and when they untap their one land, you could say, oh, oh no, buddy, buddy, I think you wanted that tapped, didn't you? and you can basically lock them out of that untap every single turn. If there's a lot of creatures, or a few creatures more likely, since creatures weren't that popular back then, you can just use your icy manipulators to tap them down and gain lots and lots of time with your winter orb. Now when you're looking at the old rules, if an artifact was tapped, then its effect was turned off. Now you might see where this is going pretty dirty, so what you do is, is at the end of their turn, you take your Icy Manipulator and you tap down your Winter Orb. Then you get to untap all of your lands and then they don't get an untap step. Brutal, brutal. There were several different finishers that people chose for this deck back in the day. However, it's not really that relevant because the relevant part of this deck is that you got to play all of your stuff and they didn't get to play any of their stuff. Really fair. So what is the most annoying deck of all time? It is a legacy deck that graced our presence for only a small instant before being banned forever away. It is a deck known as Flash Hulk and it includes 
the card from my Arnold Schwarzenegger deck deck, Poltein Hulk. So how does this deck work and why is it so oppressive? Well, the reason why it's so oppressive is because it can kill your opponent before their first main phase ever. So on their upkeep, they've drawn their seven cards and then you're like, wait, wait, don't play a land or anything because I'm gonna kill you right now. Now that sounds like your opponent doesn't get to play magic and that's exactly what happens. So let's go over the combo, which is a little bit complex, but quite rewarding. Okay, so let's go over this combo. And remember, this is happening before their first draw step. This is before your opponent gets to do anything. All right, so what do you do? Well, first you have Gemstone Caverns and you start with that in play. You know, that's what you have in your opening hand. You get a little lucky. Then you exile either an Elvish Spirit Guide or a Simeon Spirit Guide to get you to two mana, one blue and one of either red or green. Then you use that two mana to cast Flash. And when you cast Flash, you put Protein Hulk into play. If you don't have Protein Hulk, use Summoner's Pact to go get Protein Hulk. When you do this, then you obey the rules text on Flash. So you take your Protein Hulk and you put it in the graveyard because you can't pay that summoning cost. When it goes to the graveyard, then you follow the rules text on Protein Hulk and it says go get as many creatures as you want that have a total converted mana cost of six or less. So what creatures are we gonna go get? Well, the creatures that we're gonna get are four Disciple of the Vaults, four Phyrexian Marauders, and four Shifting Walls. Now when these X artifact creatures come into play, they'll come into play with zero toughness, okay? So as soon as they come into play, then they'll die and go to the graveyard. When they die, you'll get your Disciple of the Vault triggers. So you'll have four Disciple of the Vaults, and you'll see eight creatures dying. So four times eight. How much life does your opponent lose? Let me give you a hint. It's a lot more than 20. So with this outrageous combo, you can kill your opponent before they literally get to do anything. Extremely obnoxious. Now, because this is in Legacy, we protect the combo with Force of Will and Pact of Negation. Well, that wraps it up for our top 10 most annoying decks. If there are any decks that you think are particularly annoying and should have made the list, let us know in the comments, and I'm sure we're going to have tons of annoying decks down there. Now, if you enjoyed the top 10, feel free to hit those subscribe and like buttons, especially that like button. Let me know if, if you like these good old top 10s, and I will see you guys next video.